Yo, what is up guys? It is Small back again with another Epic 7 video for you guys today. And today we're going to be talking all about Season 3 of Ancient Inheritance. Now, Ancient Inheritance, very important event that you guys want to participate in. And the way you guys actually will be able to participate is by going into your guild tab, clicking Battlefield, and you'll see you have Ancient Inheritance here. And you're going to see that it's for two weeks long. You're going to want to participate every day if you can because the rewards you get are very very good if you look at the interface here you're going to see that there's a currency you get from doing the event and that there's a shop here as well which you can get very nice stuff from you can get artifact charms which are very nice now the epics and the graders are limited so you can only get a few of them but there's going to be unlimited lesser ones this is a very good source of artifact charms you can also get bookmarks greater modification gem selection chests molagoras which are always good and you're going to get very very good gear here you're going to see that these destruction set pieces the subs on them are extremely, extremely good. No matter how this rolls, guys, this will be usable in PvP for sure. You definitely want to buy out the shop for sure. Also, guys, if you guys click on the main reward button here, you'll actually see that you can get so many good pieces of gear from the bosses. Now, when you clear a boss on a certain zone, there are going to be four zones, guys. Every time you clear the, the whole zone and kill the boss there, you'll be able to loot a piece of gear as well. And you're going to see that these pieces are also insane. As long as you like dodge the effectiveness on this weapon, this necklace is good no matter what. Um, also on the ring, if you dodge the attack, and on the boots, if you dodge the effectiveness as well, you're going to get some extremely, extremely good pieces. You definitely, definitely want to participate with your guild. And for that reason, you're going to want to make sure you are in a guild for this event and are in a very active guild. Because if you guys actually don't clear the floors or the zones by the end of the event period, you're actually going to miss out on these rewards. In the first season, you were actually able to buy this with Brave Crests later on in the season. But now, Smilegate made it so you actually cannot buy them, and they actually reduce the difficulty. So as long as your guild is very active, you'll be able to actually get maximum rewards. It's very easy to clear if you have a decent amount of units and know the strategies, which I'll let you guys know. And you definitely do want to clear all the zones to get all this gear before it ends, and also, you know, buy out the shop, which is easily doable if you actually just play the game every day and actually do this event, which doesn't take that much time. That being said, what are the best strategies to actually clear? So you're going to see that it is day two currently of Ancient Inheritance for me. Day one, actually, it's about to be day two later on. But you're going to see, you know, you can actually see that your guild members are going to be all on your map here. And you're probably going to start off down here at the starting zone, right? And the way you want to do this is basically you're going to get a relic. So relics are going to be like upgrades to your character. These don't really matter too much. These are just going to be extra effects you get. Um, in general, the ones that boost your experience will be the best in the long run, but don't worry about this too much. Just get the ones that seem okay. You're also going to see at the top right here, you're going to get entry tickets. These are basically your sources of energy, exploration provisions. This will refill every single day or recharge every day to a certain amount. And you're going to need to use this to move around and interact with objects. So when you spawn in, you want to basically interact with a lot of these chests and stuff. Don't really bother with these monsters here that are low level. You don't really need to hit these. Just go around looting the chests, you know, looting these scrolls, looting the paintbrush looking thing, the statues here, right? And just trying to level up your units. Now I'm going to talk about what units you're going to want or what classes you want to level up, but just in general, just walk around collecting stuff and making your way to the mini boss. You're going to see that there's going to be bosses on your screen here denoted with like a certain emblem. And if you zoom out, it'll be really easy to see. Like for example, this is the main boss, right? It's denoted with a orange skull. You're going to see ones with purple skulls out as well, which will be mini bosses. And if your guild can clear a certain amount of mini bosses per floor, you'll be able to activate the main boss. So you basically just kill mini bosses and then kill the main boss after. So like I said, you just want to loot statues, relics, you know, chests as you're walking around and just basically level your units. As you level up your exploration level, you'll be able to actually enlist more units. Enlisting units is basically, you know, being able to use these units in these, um, in the ancient inheritance. You can't use every single unit that you have. For example, I'm level four, so I have 12 slots and you can always switch them out later on, right? Um, but you can only switch them out up to a certain amount of times per season. So you wanna make sure you choose the right ones, and have a strategy going into it. Now, what strategy do you guys want to do? So if you look at my units here, you're gonna see that I have all warriors and soul weavers. So basically you're just going to want to use a soul weaver for sure. You definitely need healing in this for sure. You're also going to want to stack one certain class. Now, in my opinion, I think the best ones to stack are going to be warriors. Warriors are very tanky. They have a lot of self-sustain, so they're very, very strong. And just in general, the warrior classes, class units are just very powerful in Ancient Inheritance. Secondary to warriors are probably going to be thieves, rangers, and mages, right? 
the other DPS subclasses, but I definitely think Warriors are the best. If you can stack Warriors and Soul Weavers, right, and just level them to the max level, you'll be in a good situation, right? So you can see that you can actually level classes, and you're going to see that you get a lot of bonuses. So for me, I have everything level 1 besides Warriors and Soul Weavers, and like for now, I can level it up again, and you're going to get extra stats. You just want to stack Soul Weaver plus another class, preferably Warrior. I think Knights are pretty bad here, so don't worry about that too much, but definitely Warriors and Soul Weavers are the best. Now you're going to see these crazy stat upgrades, you're probably thinking, wow, will my warriors have like 40k, 50k HP? No, because gear sets will be calculated here, but gear stats are not calculated. So you don't need crazy gear here. Even 5 star units work fine. So even if you think that you can't participate because you don't have a lot of units, you can even use level 50 units here and you're good to go, right? I just want to make sure that you do use the units that you are stacking. For example, since I'm stacking warriors, I can use like Terran Regard and Sigurd, and they will be very, very strong for my for my build. Now, most people will be using the Warrior Soul Weaver build. It is a very, very common strategy, but some people do like using Rangers, um, Thieves, and Mages if they have a lot of them built already, right? It just makes more sense. Um, even though you're a little bit you're using a less efficient class, at least you have a lot more units, right? Now, yeah, like I said. You want to build your units like that, you want to explore to level up your exploration level, so you get EXP to level up your classes, preferably Warrior and Soul Weaver, like I said. And while you're collecting chess guys, you get crazy, crazy, crazy like rewards. You're going to get a lot of artifact charms, Mulagora, Powder of Knowledge is super easy to farm here, so you definitely want to collect that. You also get Transmit Stones, you get Leafs, and like I said, even more charms, and there's so much more you get. The only thing is, you don't want to be a Loot Goblin, so there's a lot of people in guilds, that just run around, don't hit any bosses, and they just collect chests. Um, for me, I was guilty of that in the first season, um, but after that, you know, I try not to do it anymore. But it's really, really tempting, right? Because you get a lot of good stuff, but you get a lot of powder of knowledge here, especially, which is very good for like free to play players. But you don't want to be that person that kind of sabotages your guild, right? The goal is to clear the mini bosses and then activate the teleporter to the main boss and then kill the main boss so that everyone in your guild can get the main reward of the gear, right? So you definitely want to make sure you help out your guild. Um, usually people are in a Discord server talking about the strategies and which way to go. If you guys don't know what to do, right, just follow your guild members. You can see like the entire guild is over here where I am because um, there was a mini boss here and I actually hit this mini boss first and I told the guild guildies to hit this boss, right? And then, yeah, just made everyone come here. So you want to communicate with your guild if you can. Usually active guilds will have a Discord set up. So it's very, very important you guys know what you are doing. Now, talking about bosses though, you want to make sure you actually look at what the bosses do. So bosses actually will have certain effects and you want to make sure that you actually know what they do because um, like certain bosses will actually have you know certain things that you want to watch out for. For example, a lot of bosses have something called seal. So if you guys don't know what seal is, seal makes it so that your passives like your S2 on your Huayang for example will not activate. You want to make sure you read all the boss's skills. If there's a lot of if you're facing a boss that has seal, obviously you don't want to take units that have passive S2s, right? Because your passive won't work. There's also going to be bosses that are going to have some effects where you need two or more buffs on your entire team or you're just going to take extra damage. And then areas like that, you know, units like Tamarin won't be used as much. You can use units like DN because they have two buffs on your S3, right? You can use like Made Chloe stuff like that. You kind of want to strategize because otherwise your units will just die instantly. It's very, very important that you actually do this. But yeah, like I said, guys, like bosses, right? You want to look, you're going to see the first boss on the first zone is going to have the seal. So you're not going to want to take units that have that S2 um, passive, right? Definitely make sure you guys put some thought into it. Um, it is very tempting to just autopilot this, but it is so important to get your um, rewards. A lot of guilds actually disband or not disband, but replace a lot of members that don't participate. I remember during the first season, guys, my guild was very sting uh, stingy about it. We kicked like three or four members because they did not participate every day. Um, obviously, you don't have to play every single day, but at least put an effort into it. And depending on your guild, they'll have different rules. Um, but definitely, definitely make sure that you um, actually you know, participate in Ancient Inheritance and follow what I said pretty carefully because, yeah, you can even see my guild leader here. He says, remember to only level two classes. Discord pin has mini guide, right? So there's already a lot of guides. Um, it's very important that you clear it, so guild guilds should you know make sure that everyone knows what to do and if you guys have friends that don't know what to do then uh, you can always send them this video and hopefully this clear things up for you guys but yeah just to summarize guys level two classes right preferably warriors and soul weavers you know get chests get whatever you need to get some loot but also make sure you're hitting the mini bosses and the main boss right you don't want to just be a loot goblin and yeah you don't want to you don't need to really 
care about your gear on your units because only gear sets are calculated. So that being said, guys, I hope this video helped you guys out for Ancient Inheritance. Really, really hope you can get all the pieces from this event because the loot is crazy here. The, loot, the gear always rolls very well because it is level 88 with maxed rolled um, substats. And the subs are very, very good this time and also the sets. That being said, hope this video helps you guys out, guys, and I'll see you guys next video. Peace.